by Sue Minahan. Welcome to Talk Cosmos, the show where Sue Rose Minahan and her panel of guests bring you leading edge astrology conversations through a journey of soul growth patterns connecting astrology's energetic cycles. Get ready to understand your path in the cosmic roots of the stars. Hello and a big Mother's Day. To e- oh, hello and a big Mother's Day to everybody. And if your mother's not here any longer, happy parenting yourself. And if you had a better idea about parenting yourself, yay, that's what it's all about. We live and learn, and blessings to all. So today is May 14th, and this is Talk Cosmos Archetypal Symbols, because we're the second week of every month. I'm Sue Rose Minahan, founder, and so glad to be here. This Taurus new moon, it's very strong. We have so many energies of consciousness occurring at this time, prior and and big plan- planets moving into new signs that the dynamics are powerful. And I know myself, I'm realizing that my whole life structure has reshifted, or is reshifted a word? It's shifting, right? <laughs> it's shifting. And the people I know, their lives are shifting, meaning that there's like a, like tides or earthquakes between coordinating and connections. I am in Seattle, Washington, actually proper Bellevue. I came here, and I'm with one of our panelists. The other has a mother that she's celebrating and will be also with us because we are now ready for archetypal symbols. I hope all that makes sense. Synthesizing the current archetypal new moon energies through weaving symbol systems, such as Sabian symbols, numerology, Mayan novel energy days, or even Tarot, connecting to the astrological data and concepts for planets and cosmos, this is your Archetypal Symbols panel. I'm Sue Rose Minahan, the founder of Talk Cosmos, an electric evolutionary astrologer, consultant, certified color energy life coach, vice president of the Washington State Astrological Association, member of Kepler Astrology Toastmaster Club, of a Dwarf Planet University diploma and AA with music degree. I love mythology, philosophizing, collaboration. I'm an artist, writer, a perpetual student of life. I'm Elizabeth Liz Machette, a professional astrologer, intuitive, numerologist, and tarot reader. I'm a certified sacred healing counselor, providing nurturing, in-depth consultations for individuals and couples. I'm an author, blogger, speaker, and international Reiki master and teacher. I create safe space in which to explore the deeper patterns of your life to clarify your current circumstances and help you find your best path forward. And I'm Justin Crockett-Helsey, an archetypal astrologer, teacher, and author. I combine both Western ancient astrology and modern psychological astrology with Eastern Vedic astrology. And I specialize in predictive, electional, and karmic astrology for individuals and couples. I'm a certified aromatherapist, an essential oil specialist, and an herbalist, and I offer remedial modalities of plants for psychological life issues to empower clients with compassionate healing. I also do in-depth astrological research into arcane astrological concepts, focusing on the mystical, occult side of astrology. Eleanor Roosevelt once said, Yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, and And today today is a a gift. gift. And that's why it's called the present. And such a surprise the present always is. So here we are. It's so great. We have, I think we have all of us because I have a black screen. Are we? Oh, okay. (laughs) Yes. So we are at the studio. It's always a new experience. And very exciting. I get to see (laughs) Justin right here and Liz coming from her home. And now I see everybody on the screen. Okay. Back to, that was a fast out to the, well, we have a new moon to talk about. Maybe we'll just get those 
screen. Uh, oh, I need to reload it. Well, such is life. Do you want to <laughs> talk? Yes, Justin. So we're talking about evaluation. That's right, a new moon in, in Taurus. And uh, this this is actually an interesting new moon because of some of the planetary conjunctions. Um, I believe um, it's a Mercury's conjunct the North Node with Jupiter, correct, Liz? Yes. And and what do you what do you see about that while she's bringing up the chart? Uh, well, that's what I'm doing too is bringing up the chart. <laughs> well, you I'm know, used to seeing it on the. <laughs> it is 28 degrees, and just on a personal basis, that is conjunct both Justin's and my Mars. Mars, yeah. meaning there's a lot of. Uh, it, for me, I'm going through a storage unit. I've been doing nothing but there you go. Yeah, that's so Taurus action about my possessions and my right. values and what to keep and what to give and making space. Right. I, so, so maybe mm -hmm. for people who are not really aware of astrology, Taurus rules uh, the second house in the astrology chart, which is possessions, values, real estate, um, money, resources. And and so um, with such a strong uh, moon in Taurus, this time where people are going to probably be a little bit more focused on that uh, because of that north node there. Um, and I, I think you've got some stuff going on with uh, some uh, household goods, don't you, Liz? Oh, yeah. Always cleaning out. That's for sure. There's <laughs> always stuff to clean out. It seems like the more I clean, the more there is to clean out. So and evaluating, do I want to keep it or do I want to let it go? Um, is this useful to me? Do I still enjoy it or is it a burden? Right. Um, you know, with the 28 degrees, we have um, 28 breaks down to a one and the mid heavens at 10. So we have a one. So it's like, you know, kind of reevaluating of like, do we want to move forward with that? Right. right. And then the ascendant degree is at 18. So um, that's and that's a nine. Leo. That's yes, Leo, Leo, right? And so we have a nine. So it's like kind of this, let's finish up some things. Let's evaluate. And then how do we want to move forward with all that? Right, right. So that makes a, a big difference. Um, yeah. To me, that's... It's... It's definitely more active. It's definitely a more active, uh, you know, because Taurus can be a little bit with Taurus energy not moving so quickly, right? I mean, it's 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 not slow, but it it, it evaluates uh, when it needs to engage in stuff. It doesn't move as fast. But this one, um, especially with the lunar mansion and the Chakra in um, in uh, uh, Pratika, which is associated with the uh, Hindu goddess Fire. This is a Taurus energy in this particular nishakra, which is a little bit more um, curious. And uh, definitely being a fire god relates to that ascendant in Leo. It's much more uh, active and curious and uh, willing more to take risks, this Taurus moon, you know. Well, risk, here I am. well and then the tarot cards uh, that I picked and we kind of talked about was the Hierophant for Taurus. Right. And the Empress for Venus, because Venus is very prominent in this chart. And the Hierophant, um, to me, and then you can add it, knowledgeable, spiritual mentor, teacher, a lot about tradition. Yeah, yeah, conservative tradition, um, values, values. And surprises. I think Uranus is happening. <laughs> because here I am. I've been going, I'm here, but I'm not here. It's like, I'm probably closer if I was in Hawaii. Well, I'm not. So Sue's we back. have yes, I'm back. <laughs> so we have slides, and we are as a title evaluation. Justin and I were, all three of us were talking about the Sabians, which we'll bring up, and we'll explain some of that as we go for those people that aren't familiar with our focus, because many ways to talk about a new moon, but we're talking about it from some of the symbols that are so um, so potent. potent. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, so potent, exactly. Yeah. So here we have Liz and Justin. You can always find them at their websites and myself. So numerology, just what you two were talking about. They add up to one. Yep. And beginning and endings. Thank you, Liz, for that work that you did, which is, isn't that a lot of transition? 
Yes. And it's, you know, it's like, it's not all, ha you're not let, letting everything go at once and you're not starting everything over. You could just be reevaluating um, and reworking something. It doesn't mean you have to start a whole new beginning, but it's like, do something in a new way. On a personal level, that's so true. Quickly, I moved from 10 to 5 to 4.5 to 5 storage unit, giving stuff away. And I also have an interview coming up on a um, podcast called Interview Elite Podcasts, which will be fun to air, which I haven't scheduled yet. Just a short little five-minute one. But it's like just that. Like what are we keeping and what are we renewing? And I think we're going to start a bit of Patreon for Talk Cosmos. So that's a new energy. <laughs> Justin, you've got an <laughs> eye. What? Yeah. Right. I was going to say, you know, I liked that word that you used, Liz, which was like, what was it? Do something or or it's it, this is a little bit more of an action oriented uh, Taurus moon. Right. You, and you it use can the word be, do something. Even if it's a small thing, you know, it could be one piece of paper that's there that you need to put in the recycle box or <laughs> or move one little item. You know, right. it can be very simple, small steps to begin with. Well, that's a good reminder because whenever you think about Taurus and Jupiter, I think big. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. Maybe because my Mars is in Taurus. Here we have a tarot card for Taurus. Yeah. And the Liz, Hierophant. Yeah, Liz was just talking about that. Ah. Yeah. And there's a couple of different pictures. I love that one with the Buddha there. I don't know who did. And the roots coming from the trees and the two different colors, that, you know, and the rainbow coming out of it. I thought that's a great imagination. So it's really like that. Would you say then mostly, because I always find this particular card of the major arcana a little more difficult because it's not the emperor. It's really the, um, they refer it to as a pope sometimes, but I don't really consider it like that at all. But I guess it is a hierarchy of of, of, talk a little bit about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's a traditional spirituality. It's the papal, mm. you know, the pope, and okay. and the original, and then of course the high priestess was the the female pope, the papal piece. I think ah. that's how you say it. Anyway, um, yeah. So it as as Liz was saying, it it it, it relates to that sort of uh, uh, knowledge and and teacher and tradition. So Some wisdom, kind of the, the wisdom keeper, maybe, and that, you know, a mentor, counselor type of thing. So it's, but, you know, it does have a tradition associated with it. Right. Oh, so that could even be astrology, astrology yeah. teaching, and traditional, mm -hmm. perhaps, right. or any kind of wisdom keeper. Yeah. Thank you. And the Empress, had you talked about her, the ruler of Taurus? Venus. Go ahead, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> she rules venus and venus is very prominent in this chart that's why i added uh two tarot cards because i thought it was appropriate and it's really interesting that she's the third pip or major arcana card and the hierophant is the fifth so they add up to an eight and then we have the 28 degrees of our sun and moon so the eight brings in um it's like if we've done the work, there's like some payoff or reward or um, I don't like to use the word luck, but um, and sometimes things don't turn out exactly how we think. But sometimes it's better when we look back and have hindsight. Right. We might not have chosen for it to go about that direction, but it just kind of works out. It works very well for Venus because Venus is, you know, co-ruling, but with Taurus, definitely the birth of of. Well, I don't know, it's already been germinated, but it's that strength of existence. Yeah. Yeah. And not about creation and creator. You know, it's like the ideas. It's like planting the seed even. Mm -hmm. So, and that kind of goes along with that one and nine. It's like the end and the beginning. And it's like, you know, to plant the garden, you know, usually you weed it and then you work on the soil and then you plant the seed. So there's, you know, a big process to get to the end result. Yeah. yeah. I was, my mind was going off in the number eight, but I guess we don't need to elaborate too much because I was reading that it's really achievement and that, would you say that 
from one interpretation that blessings, if you receive, then you hand something back. It's very spiritual in the sense of, of balance with the universe. So that's part of this maybe an inside track of our in beginnings and endings that we're doing. Would you right. say that? With values, right, mm -hmm. right. Okay. And well, you know, and of course, Venus ruling Libra as well. There's that relationship you're just, you're just True. inferred to. Yeah, yeah relationships. All right, next, Sabian symbols. And generally for our podcast people, we will say, again, clairvoyant Elsie Wheeler, 1925, with Mark Edmund Jones, the astrologer, created these imageries for each zodiac degree. So they're very symbolic. They've been interpreted many times. And we will discuss them. We always start with the ascendant and then go to the midheaven, and then we'll go to the new moon. So, And, and, and mm -hmm. maybe for people who are new to astrology, knowing that every time there's a new moon, then the part of fortune is right on the ascendant, uh, conjunct the ascendant. And this one, we got the Leo. That's fascinating, yes. And I, yes, exactly. So 18 degrees Leo and 33 minutes, almost 18 and a half, essentially, degrees, which is... In the, in my mind flips around different ideas. I've been flipping around a lot with my ideas, so I'm going to try to stay steady here. Taurus, steady. <laughs> Let you two elaborate. But interestingly, this is a pretty dynamic chart. Immediately, it's got that tension mm. all the way around. It's got an opposition between the two rulers of Scorpio, which is one of the, which is the south node, past and present, you could almost say. And each one is like Mars... Well, here we're talking we're talking aspects and not sapiens. Shall we continue? Yeah, let's go. Let's dive in. All right. <laughs> Thank you. And I just want to mention that we use three degrees of the Sabian symbol. And to keep it simple, it's like what led up, the present, and where we're going next. So you could simplify it and say the past, present, and future. Beautiful. Well, yeah. past, then I'll begin. Uh, and then Liz and then Justin. Leo, 17 degrees. It's a volunteer church choir singing religious hymns. So it's that togetherness, and the key word is togetherness. And uh, you, uh, who's next? <laughs> oh, 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 uh, Liz. Liz, yeah. Leo 18, a chemist conducts an experiment for his students. And the keynote is inquiring into the hidden process of nature and the human mind. And the key word is alchemy. And then Leo 19 is where we're going, is a houseboat party. And the keynote is the enjoyment of temporary freedom from rigidity, structured social behavior. And keywords are freedom from social rigidity. That's pretty yeah. powerful. I mean, when you consider that people want to be together uh, in the past for this ideal and they're, they're uh, transforming alchemy. Alchemy is a really yeah. powerful word and excited about the discovery of it, and then breaking away to that freedom. Yeah. Any other we, comments? Go ahead. We're working together to create something, so I, I think that's beautiful. Yeah, and I, I like that. It was interesting that on, the, uh, the, uh, the, on that um, 17 degrees, it talked about a feeling of togetherness, and then the 19 degrees, which is a houseboat party, also has that, and that's very much mm -hmm. that Leo ascendant, which is a, yes. you know, let's let's all get together, let's have a good time, and so it's a little, again, speaking to this a little bit more of a fiery Taurus energy yeah, on this party. chart. Yeah, let's have a party. Well, enjoy what there is. Yeah, yeah, ah. yeah. Don't forget to enjoy. Yes, that's right. <laughs> have fun. Right. It's not all grim. Have fun on this new moon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. We have a bullseye there with the arrow that telling folks right where it is. It's always on the east side on astrology. So next is the top. And I'm going to flip to the chart real quick. See here, folks, it's going to be the midheaven, which is the cusp of the, in this case, between the ninth and the tenth house. So I'll begin again. Taurus, 10 degrees. This is the past. A Red Cross nurse, the compassionate linking of all men. And the key word, consec consecration to humanity. 
Liz. And then um, Taurus 11, woman watering flowers in her garden. Development of the power of the mind of which ego consciousness is based. Cultivation. And then Taurus 12 is a young couple window shopping. The keynote is the fascination of the youthful ego with the products of its culture and keywords are socialization of desires. So what do you guys have to say? <laughs> well, I find it very interesting that um, even though Taurus 10 doesn't say it's a woman, but traditionally a nurse was a woman's career. And then this 11 degrees talks about a woman and then a, a young couple. So it feels like the evolution of a person maturing and um, developing and cultivating kind of like how uh, we talked about in the Empress card of um, mm -hmm. germinating. So it's cultivating it. They correspond with each other. Go Thank ahead. you, Liz, because I had forgotten, but I too was focusing a little on that factor of the, gender and just of the of course with astrology it's it's energy consciousness so it doesn't matter but yet that represents this nurturing idea because we all we are certain and we received that's yeah powerful. yeah i always you know when these two come together especially the red cross nurse and the woman watering the garden and then of course right after it the sort of this sort of um insertiveness into the world about desires yeah, I see a lot of times this relates back to gender, um, sort of that um, intention of caregiving of, mm -hmm. you know, because here we are, the, the nurse, we're, we're tending a garden and, and there's a desire and intention to care give and to, to germinate back to what Liz said with the, um, with the, the uh, empress, you know. And to remember to care, take care of yourself also. And to grow and to enjoy, you know, with a couple out win window shopping is enjoy again here. We're getting, it's like these yeah. symbols are telling us over and over again, a very similar pattern or the same thing. <laughs> and it's a good time to plant. <laughs> if yes. you're going to plant some garden <laughs> stuff this weekend, yeah. And it is in that house. Uh, well, this is for this because it shifts, but as far as the nation goes on a generic form, because this is Eastern time that this chart is which I never had said. It's May 19th, 2023, and we'll say that later at 11.53 a.m. in the East Coast. So that's what we're looking at here. But it's a stability in, in that area that we are with the outside world, but on a personal basis, our, um, how we manifest with our ascendant is sort of an well, not I keep thinking party, but more of a, a high, like it's theatrical. I mean, right. it's it's okay to be right. Mm -hmm. I you know I I I like how this the sun and moon are in the last quadrant here. Mm -hmm. You know, East Coast it's in the tenth house of one's outer facing to the world, sort of your your role, and then if it's West Coast, of course, it shows up in the eleventh house. It's still the group structure, and so it, it it definitely in the last quadrant, which you're talking about right there just a minute ago, sort of getting out there, get getting active more, getting getting something mm. going, like Liz was talking about in the very beginning. Not necessarily starting something new, but getting something going or get moving. Now we have a few minutes before we leave. I think for our little breakaway in, at the half hour. So I think we could do the sun and moon itself. Now we're getting to the name of the game for the new moon, always when they connect at the same degree, which is 28 degrees Taurus, 25. And remembering that we're finishing up this nodal, even though we're talking about Sabians, I can't help but realize that this is so close to how the, the, the node, nodal access which is North Node and Taurus started a year and a half ago, back in January of 20, let me think here, 2021. Yeah. No, 2022. Do. Thank you, 2022. Yeah. So I'll begin. Taurus, 27 degrees, an old Indian woman selling the artifacts of her tribe to passerbys. And a keynote, peaceful adaptation to collective needs. And the keyword, 
adjustment. And then Taurus 28, a woman past her change of life experiences a new love. Keynote is man's capacity to rise in consciousness and feeling above biological limitations. The key word is new re-beginnings. And then Taurus 29 degrees is two cobblers working at a table. Keynote is the twofold character of man's mature understanding, and the key word is perspective. That gets right down to the heart of evaluation, doesn't it? Yes? Yeah. Listen. Yes. Justin. And, you know, kind of back to that one and nine, it's like evaluating what we need to keep or let go of and what to move on with, you know. So that was cool. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Here I'm flipping around. Well, I think we better break away and we'll come back and touch base on this and continue on as we thread together and weave these symbolic meaningfulness because that's what life is. It has many reflections. So thank you. Thank you, everybody, on Mother's Day for joining us. And we wish you a wonderful day. And come back. We'll be right back with ourselves. While we take a break from this week's edition of Talk Cosmos, let's take a look at this cycle's archetype. We're currently in the period of Taurus. By leaving a cycle based upon initiation, the energy of Taurus integrates spirit into a solid form of matter that is tangible and physical. It's an earth sign, concerned with self-sufficiency and the values to maintain the strength of a life form throughout its survival. This is Martha Norwalk. Every Sunday morning, beginning at 9 a.m., thanks in part to the Ananda Institute of Living Yoga, we cover the world of animals. This week, May 21st, it's Behavior Training and Healing Sunday with me, and talk with your animals or human loved ones on this side or the other, feng shui and personal awareness coaching with Natasha Venter. Hope you can join us and plan to call in with your questions for either one of us or for a personal reading with Natasha. Martha Norwalk's Animal World, Sunday morning, 9 a.m. to noon, right here on Alternative Talk, a.m. 1150. Talk Cosmos brings you leading-edge astrological conversations with hour-long programs each week on KKNW. The show goes live every Sunday from 1 to 2 p.m. Pacific. Talk Cosmos weekly programs are also available to watch live on Facebook and YouTube, along with daily chats throughout the week on the Talk Cosmos YouTube channel. While you're there, make sure you click like and subscribe buttons so you can get the full Talk Cosmos experience. Or, if you'd rather listen to the show archives with audio only, the entire podcast collection since 2018 is available on most podcast carriers. So, grab your coffee, tea, or kombucha and enjoy the show. Make us part of your daily routine. Alternative Talk, 1150. Hello, we are back. I am being reminded by our wonderful sound board engineer. So it's so great to be back in the studio where we have dynamics. We can look at the camera, look at each other, look at everything. Liz and Justin, quickly speaking, do you have something coming up that you would like to share with our audience? Liz, you go first. <laughs> um, I'll be doing Astro Talk in May, the first Thursday of the month. And you can find that on um, my website. Uh, it's kind of through Washington State Astrology Association. And I'm working on some things that I was hoping to get launched in spring, but I think it's going to wait till late summer. Now, it's the second Thursday. Is that the date? You said yes. the first. Okay. Second Thursday of the month. Did I say second first? Second Thursday. Oh. And it's at, and people can find it at your website, a light path, or just Google your name and it comes mm -hmm. up. And it's under, I think, events. Or and, well, under the astrology tab. Under you'll the find astrology Astro Talk. tab. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that sounds good. And we had a nice talk. Okay, and Justin? Uh, just day-to-day uh, -day, uh, client consultations, so astrology consultations. And um, I do, um, I am working on a yoga um, astrology, mm -hmm. some workshops coming up. You so. just finished and completed a long eight-week yeah. course. So yeah. that really takes all the focus. Yeah. And I know you had a, a lecture series. So very good. Just always checking in. Yeah. And yes. Consultations are great. 
And nope. myself, there will be that little interview that I'll have to tell people about. And as always, all right, let's get back to our, there we are, the new moon. Here's the date, uh, times. It's on the 19th of May and in Greenwich or London, for, it's going to be at, in the afternoon, it's 3.53 p.m. North America, Eastern Time, 11.53 a.m., and then an hour going down until you get to the Pacific Northwest and Arizona at 8.53 in the morning, and in Hawaii at 5.53. So, evaluating perspectives generally will just say that on an objective basis, it's that seed consciousness, which is so amazing. And you've been talking about the beginnings and the endings for this new moon because it's a strong 28 degrees. It's almost at the very end. And often it's said that 28 degrees is like the culmination of the whole bur- you know, process of a sign before it begins to move into the next one. But... And we talked in the very beginning about Taurus. Generally, it's survival-oriented, very earthbound. It's self-reliant, resourceful. It's a grounding fertilization. And the most amazing thing is that only a few days later, Jupiter enters Taurus. So we really are accentuating this Taurian uh, experience right off the get-go, because Uranus has been in Taurus, too. I mean, there's a lot right. of uh, energy. Well, I like, I like you know, it's actually on the new moon. It's in zero degrees Taurus there, so I, and it's conjunct Mercury. So I like how you put there mm. that it's deepening that that consciousness of Taurus energy, I, because Jupiter tends to expand and oh, good. intensify and expand, and so it's right there with Mercury, the planet of communications, and thinking that's deepening that. I liked how you said that. It is, yes, it is. Consider and there's a lot that. of Taurus energy in this new moon chart with, you know, the house companions of Jupiter, the North Node, Mercury, the Midheaven, Vesta, Uranus, Sun and Moon, and Sedna. So there's a lot of energy. And those there. consciousnesses, when you consider that's our hearth, it's our originality of the moment at, that we're that's uh, with. That was the hearth was Vesta. Uranus is the immediate now, like it doesn't care about past and present, it's like right now. And of course, Sedna, she's just going into Gemini on the 16th or 11th of June, so it's right, and it's a 50 year cycle at this point going into June, into Gemini rather, and she's our the furthest planet out the consciousness is our spiritual destiny so it's like we're leaving some sense of grounding talk about another transformation into this connective mental area that's everything is intertwined it's like a reflection of a prism in different ways right well you know and i and i i like what you you referenced earlier and just to remind us all that the lunar nodes have been in this Taurus mm. Scorpio energy for over a uh, well a year and a half as of this July, and so we've been dealing with resources, right? Yes. Materialism versus spirituality and resources, and and I think this Jupiter transit here near the end of the nodes leaving this is just sort of the the last pass by here, you know. And so in people's lives, we've been dealing with resources, money, economy, inflation over the last year and a half. That this kind of, well, and of course, it's interesting as Jupiter moves into Taurus here, new moon, you know, the United Nations is fe- facing a de- debt limit crisis, right? Resources, money. Oh, yes. And so, you know, in people's lives, though, this could be the time when we, we actually go for that that raise or we, we do something as starting a new, some new financial adventure or actually taking action on it. Like, not necessarily something new, but rebeginnings. Or as Liz, Liz, what did you say earlier, kind of getting getting something going, right? Right, or moving forward on an idea, you know, it could have been something that you've been doing for a long time and now you do it in a new way. It could have been something that you've been wanting to do for uh, many, many years or your whole life. And then all of a sudden just saying, 
I'm important. I'm going to do what I want to do. Well, it's complex. Just looking at this chart in itself, which has, as people can see that are looking at it, a big red box, meaning that those are all like hinges in a, in, in a square that are like working and, and activating. It's an activation when you have squares. That's what we call it. And it's our past and our present. Those are the nodals, which is in Taurus and, and, and Scorpio. And Scorpio has two rulers, the traditional of Mars, which it's actively working with right now as Mars is just in the next day, I think you said, Liz, going to change into Leo. But So it's, it's still right there. But, and it's st- careful. It's still a little careful before it just goes into that fiery uh, Leo. But with Pluto, the modern ruler of Scorpio that is just resting at zero degrees in this intellectual elevation, community-oriented, it's like how are we fitting our past and our present into a new system of, of networking? You know, right. of, of the big picture. I think that's part of it. And I think, you know, we, that's I think it's important when you point out that Mars-Pluto opposition, there's a tension between these two. It's a volcanic thing that's mm-hmm. like the volcano wants to blow up, but it can't. There's a tension. But I think it's interesting that, there, you know, we're leaving this Capricorn cancer energy here and, and s- moving slowly into this Aquarian uh, uh, individualism uh, type of Leo energy. And so, uh, you know, at the last vestiges here, we're letting go of some emotional rationalization, possibly, about some structures we've had to let go of in Capricorn. And, you know, because Mars and Cancer can emotionally rationalize things, and really it's, you know, taking action based on how you feel, you know. And so there's a little bit more of, um, it, as, you know, you pointed out, Liz, you said it, Mars is about ready to move into Leo, so then it's going to take some action there. Yeah, it's just a little bit less than 24 hours. So it's like, even though it's still in that cancer, it kind of holds that energy, but it's moving so quickly into Leo. And I often think of grand crosses as being pulled in four different directions. And it's like, you kind of pull into one and, Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, that, but, oh, I got these other things over here. And then you kind of pull into another one. It's like, you're kind of like, it needs adjustment, some kind of adjustment. There is here, you had, pointed out some astrological highlights, Liz, and I'll here I have a list of, I put your list in and I added, one is Venus is out of bounds. That means yes. that we have the elliptical, you know, the latitude, 23 degrees 0.44 latitude, north and south, which is the Tropic of Cancer uh, in the southern hemisphere and the Tropic of no, in the in the northern, anyway, the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. So Capricorn is going south and Cancer is going north. So we have it in the north, and the southern hemisphere has a Tropic of Capricorn. But the point is, is that the sun can only go to that point as far as on Earth of being directly overhead because of how we orbit the sun. But the other planets... Many of them, not all of them, but most of them can go outside of it once in a while, especially the moon. But right now, Venus is at 25 degrees, 25 declination, which is latitudes. This is a lot of astronomy for because astrology and astronomy are related. But the point is, Venus is acting the way she wants. The consciousness is saying... It's my way. I'm going to be careful. I'm going to do my feelings, but it's going to be, it's it, it's it's important because as you, you indicated, Venus is ruling a lot of uh, guiding or ruling the backbone of the sun. Uh, I can't see my, my the midheaven off. and the moon are ruled by Venus or in Taurus ruled by Venus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, you know, Venus in out of bounds, it's kind of like, okay, there's no, she gets to act outside the rules or the box she's been put in or how she's supposed to act. It's like she's a little bit freer here in out of bounds. Some unusual activity 
<laughs> yeah, calling the cards the way she has because there's it's and it's the ascendant most... is ruled by the sun, but it's the sun is in Taurus, so it this depositor is Venus and Cancer, so it's like Venus is super strong in this chart. Um, you know, normally we might not see all that, but I I felt it was really important to bring that in because yeah, it it's just she stands out very strongly. So, what's you know the message here? <laughs> in many ways, we for instance we have Venus in Libra, Venus star point right now too at twenty nine degrees. And as, as that resting point, that's another system to look at, you know, energies, consciousness, meaning that that's in the other sign that she rules. So Venus is taking in a, a, a stronger emphasis. And Pluto, Pluto is actually in both of these strong energetic tensions. I mean, one, the tension, the grand square with that for a square like a box. And the grand trine, you know, which is a flow, and that's in Earth, except right. that Pluto's in air. Well, and you know, you're talking about Venus here being so strong, and I'm thinking back to the Sabian symbols. That last, that 29 degrees of the, um, of the the of where the the Sun and Moon are going, that 29 degrees Taurus is uh, that last Sabian symbol was was about a young couple uh, window shopping and socialization of desires and Venus representing our desires, what we desire, how we express our desires. Mm -hmm. And um, so there's and, and so there's definitely something here about evaluation or perspective of of what we desire. I, I that's what I get out of some of that, you know. Well, it's like, don't forget what we desire. Um, you know, because some people sacrifice, you know, for their families or, you know, different sacrifices and they forget about themselves or what right. they want. So it's like to come in and have some harmony with that or we could say balance with that. Um, and, 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 and I agree. And, and I think it's also about, as you're pointing out, the importance of Venus about what we desire with this Taurus oh, yeah. energy, you know, and going for it. If, if we want that, that raise, or we want to, you know, sell the house, or we want to do something, there's, this is, this is a powerful time to pay attention to our desires or what's driving us. Now, this is a complex chart, I realize, but it does show the new moon as of the East Coast, and it shows again with the red the four red arrows have the grand square, and the three blue ones is, a, is the trine. With Ceres, of course, Ceres is a dwarf planet that represents how we nurture ourselves, you know, to overcome grief. Because in the mythology, she lost, loses her daughter, the agricultural you know, Pluto, Pluto comes in, um, you know, a death and rebirth. And of course, rebirthed into a goddess, but 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 that's the mythology of it. But but with but but the the themes keep being emphasized that we are, and it's in in this particular national chart in the second house of our resources, naturally of the archetypal energy of Taurus, so that we are looking at our resources, personal and material and our sense of survival, and art and music. It's very musical. It's very artistic. You know, it's a, really a great time to, to be creative, to, to listen to music. I listen to music every day these days. Right. But you know, if we're going back to how mm. this is affecting the collective on a national level, the, as, as the nation is coming to this debt limit right now, oh, you can kind of see this in the chart with that, the Mars Pluto opposition, the tension there, right? The tension between where where do we go next and what do we do, right? And and uh, and so that I kind of it's interesting because you put this as Washington D.C., so it's a nation chart as far as um, and with the sun and the sun and the moon being in that last quadrant, there's a there's a strong about uh, there's a lot of egos involved here is what people want mm. and tension. And uh, definitely with the Leo Ascendant, people are going to want to be 
getting, you know, that fire oh, yes, energy right. getting and going. Me, me, I can do yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I will <You> do know? it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, yeah, so, yeah, so that's it's kind of interesting. Everybody wants something. Everybody desires something with Venus and Taurus there. I know, looking at the different symbols in this chart, oh, boy, ones I hadn't really considered because I'm thinking of other people. Well, that's not really so evident. I'm thinking of our Saturn. That's okay. I'm going to. But it's a blend of energy of the square and the trine. It's like there's Mm -hmm. some challenging parts, but then there's some harmony or flow with it. So mm-hmm. it's like nice to have a blend of both. And it's not just um, challenging and it's not just easy. So, <laughs> you know, to me, it's like bringing that balance together to work on it. And a lot of it's philosophical. I'm thinking because we have Jupiter, which just went into Taurus on the 16th. Today is the 14th. So it hasn't yet. It's going to in two days. That's right. Because I'm looking ahead on this chart. And then uh, in five days, of course, will be the new moon as we speak, right? Today is Mother's Day, 14th. But what's happening, but it's so close, nevertheless, Jupiter, the planet of expansion, whatever it touches, in this self-reliant, artistic, survival-oriented, resourceful Taurus, is in this action-oriented space where, as we say in astrology, with Pluto, the Pluto of transformation. Like, so let's get rid of what isn't working, what's not giving us life. And well, it's... Yeah, mm-hmm. and you see that with that trine with uh, with uh, Uranus and Ceres. It's trying. So there's that, oh, that need to change, and it's, right. you know, and Pluto is trining the sun and the moon, and it's trining Ceres. So there's a, that's part of that grand trying. Uranus is coming in here and saying, let's let's mix things up. Let's that's part of why you're seeing this rebel kind of in Congress, this rebel rebellion. Or rebel. They want to just make. Oh, yeah. Let's throw it. Let's throw a, a wrench in the works here. Yeah. Monkey wrench. <laughs> <laughs> let's just blow it up and then we'll start over. <laughs> right. Right. Uranus well. is playing, playing, uh, you know, trining Pluto and Ceres there. It's it's uh, it's. Uh, creating havoc or change yes yes i agree well it it yeah it wants what makes sense now of energies but i brought that up because you were talking about Ceres and pluto and that and it's it's so strong you know no wonder on a personal level i would imagine both of you but we're working on many dimensions trying to um go forward because it's it's zero degrees too is the all but yet it's potential right it's total potential so and then the one that that is actually focused i think what we are because two eight adds to ten adds to one is like leadership going ahead so we're trying to find that out but then again, going back to the numerology of the of how are we doing it on a personal basis with eighteen? Yeah, it's leadership activation, but achievement. But it's like nine. It's like wanting to finish things up. So how do we begin to finish things? For what? For full potential. I think we have to really sit back and realize that our partnership is with this greater unknown factor of life, right? Mm. However we want to call it you know, not to be religious at all, but just on a spiritual basis. I mean, however it works for people. But to realize that there's more energy than just ourself to to get, to work and with Pluto it. and Jupiter are at zero degrees, the beginning, and the nodes are at three. And then Mars is at the last degree, 29 of Cancer. So it's like this finish and begin, finish and start. You know, it's like it reinforces that energy again of, you know, the, Let's tie some things up. Let's try to bring something to conclusion. Or does it need to be reevaluated? And let's do it a different way. Right. Or let's make bring... these little, little changes and then we'll go. Right. And, and, but I, I was jumping in because I'm remembering from the very beginning about Leo. Play. 
have fun, enjoy, because it can get very uh, task oriented. Like, oh, I gotta do this. Oh, blah blah blah. And after a while, it's like, hey, life is supposed to. Well, there's be... some fire with this again. This oh is, yes. You know the lunar and the chakras. Oh, the chakras. Oh, let's yeah, yeah, get yeah. there. No, that's okay. Oh my that's goodness, okay. no. Here no. we are. It's a bowl. Bowl that, shape. That was, that's what yeah. you said about the. Okay, the, we the, did that. The, and Mandela. we have here, what happened to the nashakras? Did I lose it? Oh, you know what? <laughs> okay, it's earth element nashakras. Thank you. Yeah. Justin, you are going to finish us. No, I would, or no, we'll let Liz finish it. But this is, this uh, lunar mansion or chakra in the in the Jyotish is, uh, is, is more of a Taurus energy that's curious and is not mm. so stuck in the mud. And it's, it's uh, associated with the fire god Agni. Right, the, the Hindu fire god. So, whereas Taurus is safe and secure, this this pot is more willing to take risks, and that's uh, you know relates to that Leo energy, that ascendant that that we see in the chart, and the and that Mars moving into you know about ready to move into Leo, and so there's tension and fire in this in this uh, this chart. Ties it gorgeously. And that's the crit. Tikka. Is yes. that how you say it? Yeah. K-R-T-T-I-K-A. Yeah. Nishakta in Pada 3, yeah. yeah. And it's actually 4 degrees, 15 minutes Taurus for those. But isn't that fascinating how all of these, that's why we see some symbolism, why there is symbolism. Because it's like poetry. It gives you a better definition of a clarity because our minds come together with ideas and yet these words we try to express. Yeah, <laughs> Liz, <laughs> you're not huggable. You're not. Well, I think it's great. I mean, can you see me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. We I can meant, see you. Not, we you can are hear huggable, you. but you're not right here with us, sitting in the studio. That's all. Pardon okay. Because <laughs> I know my internet's been a little, little choppy. So <laughs> yeah. So have we all. We've I didn't know if been. I disappeared again or something. No, you're there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're so going to past a, and present. Go ahead. Amazing new moon. It's like. Yeah, just to like finish up some things or start to, you know, tie up some more loose ends and move forward, um, let go of things. Um, the Pluto opposite Mars, um, it's like, to me, I think of Mars as uh, could be a little bit of chaos, but Pluto is like the old way, but like the hidden, you know, it's hidden, it's deep. You know, it's like, it's, I think Mars is trying to bring out what's hidden. All right. I like that. I like that because that's working very much with Pluto that is everything about the unseen. You know, when one's learning a lot of these spiritual ideas, I mean, learning what's understood to be about spiritual ideas, because we all have them naturally, but it, there's such a language about hidden and this, and that. I keep wondering, well, what rock do I lift up to? these things but really it's just because events occur in kind of a in a synergetic manner just like today if we went into our calendar of how oh, I love your birds there aren't they lovely Liz <laughs> the birds agree yes and so yeah, yeah we do. have two minutes <laughs> yeah and uh, it, it, so in other words all this language that we've talked about whether it's Agni, the fire god, that's the Hindu, that's the backbone of the Nashakra here. That's like, how do you say it, Na Justin? Kritika. Yeah, yeah. A and then the numerology, along with the energies of the the uh, uh, astrology. Well, here we have t talk cosmos, different things on YouTube channel. Do join. Thank you for subscribing and we send a newsletter out next week i have israel ahosi again he's going to talk about the mythology with me of venus aphrodite um, jupiter is in taurus so we're going to be talking a lot about a bunch of things like that and archetypal symbols is every second week of the, right, Sunday of the month. Uh, thank you. <laughs> oh, boy, I need help from my friends. Liz, we have, I think, half a minute. <laughs> See you all next month. Oh, very good. 
Thank you. Thank you, everybody, and happy Mother's Day. Do enjoy, and blessings to all these great women that have supported us and to ourselves. We rise to our own occasion, yes? Okay, enough. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on Talk Cosmos, the show where Sue Rose Minahan and her panel of guests connect soul growth patterns with the energetic cycles of astrology. Be sure to tune in next Sunday at 1 p.m. Pacific time to continue your journey through the roots of the cosmic pathway.